Hi first graders, welcome back. Today we're gonna keep reading our story, An Ocean of Animals. This is our second lesson with this book. Last lesson, we started reading it and thinking about what we know, what we want to know, and what we've learned. And today we're gonna keep doing a little more of that. Before we get started with today's lesson, I'm gonna ask us to actually try something new. Last time I was talking with my partner, Mr. Sock Monkey, and I noticed you might not have had anybody to talk to. So today I'd really like it if, before we start our lesson, you find a turn and talk partner. Now this could be a family member who's at your house and has some free time to do this with you right now, about 15 minutes. And if they're busy, because I know some of our family members are really busy right now, then you could also choose a stuffed animal that you have that you really love and you wanna share your thoughts with, or you could choose a pet. So my dog, he's over there, he's listening to this lesson too, so maybe he could be my turn and talk partner. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time right now to choose who your turn and talk partner is going to be. Okay, so hopefully you have found your turn and talk partner and then we can get started. So today, let's go over our objective. It's the same objective as last time. It says, I can hear and discuss part of a nonfiction text, including what I wonder and what I learn. We started this last time and today we're gonna continue it for the rest of the story. Okay, to get warmed up and start reading this nonfiction book again, I want to see if you guys remember what we talked about last time, the difference between a fiction and a nonfiction story. So last time we talked about how fiction stories, they're fake, they're not real, they're telling a story with a beginning, middle, end. A lot of times it's made of illustrations. We also talked about how nonfiction books, they are real. They're full of facts about true places and true things or true people. We read it to learn more. And I talked last time about how even though most of the time it has photographs taken with a camera, it's not always the case. Sometimes it has illustrations, drawings done by people. So today I'm gonna quiz you. I have two different books, Macduff and the Baby, and People in My Neighborhood. These are books that we read together this year, first graders. Now, I am challenging you to think, which category would Macduff and the Baby fall under? Would it be a fiction story, or would it be a nonfiction story, and why? I want you to tell your turn and talk partner, whoever you chose, and tell them, what do you think? Fiction or nonfiction and why? Okay, so hopefully you told your turn and talk partner what you thought and here is the answer. Macduff and the Baby is a fiction story. It is fake, it's not real. It's a funny story that it could really happen. This dog could have really had that experience with that baby and the family, but it's made up. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end, or a plot. And it's mostly illustration. So good job if you got that nice work. I'm gonna add that to our board on this side. Okay, well now we have the other tricky question. This story, People in My Neighborhood, if you guys remember it, it was all about the different kinds of people we find in our neighborhoods, like teachers and librarians and doctors and our next door neighbors or across the street neighbors. And it was full of photographs. So what do you guys think? Was this story a fiction story, made up, fake, not real? Or was it nonfiction? It's real, it had facts in it, it's about true places and things. Go ahead and turn your, turn and tell your turn and tell partner what you're thinking. Okay. 
Okay, hopefully you told your partner, and here is the answer. It is nonfiction. So good job if you told that to your partner. People in My Neighborhood is a nonfiction story because it's about true places and things. It has mostly photographs, but it was full of facts. It's real facts about the real people that we meet in our neighborhoods. Nice work today, first graders. I'll be asking you guys some more questions about fiction and nonfiction in later lessons. Okay, so now we're gonna get started thinking about how to read this nonfiction book. Yesterday, I reminded you guys how we always have to activate our schema. Schema just means what you already know. It's your background knowledge. So when I am starting to read a book, I really want to think, hmm, what do I already know about this topic? You guys did that yesterday. You guys told us what you knew about ocean animals. Mr. Sock Monkey had told us yesterday he knew that whales and sharks live in the ocean. He also said he knew that some animals live in the deep part of the ocean where it's really dark. Now, I want you guys to think about what you have already learned from this story. So we read three chapters of this story last time. I'm wondering, what do you remember about this story? So take a moment and tell your turn and tell partner what you already learned. Go ahead. Okay, so hopefully you told your turn and tell partner all the things you remember learning about ocean animals. I'm going to remind you what Mr. Sock Monkey had said in case that's some of the things you said too or some new things that will jog your memory. So he had learned that most of the world's fish live in the sunlight zone and he also learned that millions of animals live on each coral reef. Is that some of the stuff you told your turn and tell partner? Awesome job remembering. Okay, I also want us to keep in mind that we already read three chapters but we know that good readers they ask questions before during and after reading so we asked some yesterday we said i wonder if animals in the ocean drink water i wonder how many animals are in the ocean but i really want you to keep asking questions so while i'm reading the story today if you have a question that comes up feel free to pause the video and tell your turn and tell partner what question you're thinking of. It's really something special that readers do because it's letting our brains think more deeply about the story, about the text. And while you're doing that, I do want to remind you of this rubric that we created together, first graders. This is our wondering or asking questions rubric. We know that there are four different levels of questions we could ask. We could ask a weak question, a closed question, a good question, or a really strong question. And so when you're asking questions about this text today, try to shoot for that level three or level four question because that's gonna help us even understand the text better than a level one or a level two question would. All right, we are going to get started. Back to reading our story in Ocean of Animals. I'm gonna open up to our table of contents again. Remember table of contents? That's that text feature that we saw yesterday. We had read these first three chapters, Full of Life, Coastal Zone, and The Sunlight Zone. Now, today we're gonna read the other four chapters of the book, Twilight Zone, dark zone, unknown life, and fun facts on page 20. So while I'm reading, notice those headings on the pages because headings let you know what that page is all about. Just like a table of contents lets you know what the book is going to be all about. All right. So last time we left off learning about how mammals live in the sunlight zone and how the manatees graze on seagrass. That was really neat. So today we're starting at the twilight zone. 
The twilight zone starts about 660 feet or 200 meters deep. It gets very little sunlight. The dragonfish has lights on its body to lure prey to it. So lure prey just means to get smaller animals to come closer so that it can eat them. Very sneaky. Now I want you to think, what did you learn about the twilight zone? You can grab your KWL chart from yesterday. And if you are like me and we wrote down a lot of different things and maybe your page is all filled up, that's okay. You can flip the page to a new clean page and just make another KWL chart so you have enough space to write. I'm going to give you a moment now to write down something that you learned about the twilight zone. Go ahead. Okay, so hopefully you wrote down your learning about the twilight zone. And as you were doing that, I had Mr. Sock Monkey come. He's my turn and tell partner. And he came and he told me what he learned. And maybe you guys learned the same thing. He learned that some animals in the twilight zone have lights on their bodies to catch food. He must be talking about the dragonfish that we read about. Wow, that is pretty neat. I did not know that before I read this book. So maybe that's something you also learned. All right, thanks, Mr. Sock Monkey. We're going to continue reading. <gasps> the Dark Zone. The dark zone starts at about 3,300 or 1,000 meters deep. It's very dark and very cold. Tube worms cluster around thermal vents to stay warm. So here there's some tube worms. Those are a type of animal. They must live in the dark zone way deep. Now it says they cluster around thermal vents. Cluster means that they gather so you can cluster your fingers together they gather together and thermal vents those are actually cracks that are in the ocean floor so the bottom of the ocean on the floor of the ocean there are cracks that actually produce hot water so even though the dark zone is super duper cold those thermal vents are really warm and that must be why these tube worms like to stay around and cluster there Pretty interesting. Another heading, unknown life. More than half of Earth is covered in very deep water. Very little has been explored. Who knows what animal scientists will find in the future? Wow, check out this scientist. That is pretty cool. Now, they said, who knows what, science, what animal scientists will find in the future. Future is one of our vocab words today. So I'm going to show you that. Future just means the time that is to come. It hasn't happened yet. So let's say future and let's do a gesture for future. So you're going to tap your wrist like you have a watch on. And you're going to go like this, the time that's yet to come. So say future, the time that's yet to come. Great job. Now, as I'm stopped here on this page about unknown life, I'd love for you guys to think, what have you learned about the deep parts of the ocean? What have you learned about the deep parts of the ocean? You can write about that in your KWL chart. You can turn and tell your partner what you've learned and then write it down. It's your choice. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to turn and tell your partner what you learned about the deep parts of the ocean. Mr. Sock Monkey, I'm going to tell them what I learned about the deep parts of the ocean. So, I learned that tube worms can live in the deepest part of the ocean. Do you remember those tube worms that were living in the thermal vent area? 
Very cool. Maybe you wrote that down too. Okay, so Mr. Sock Monkey and I, we have had a chance to talk a lot about what we've learned while reading this book today. But we actually have one more section to read. So on this very last section, I really want you to think. There's a lot of facts coming at you. So think, what are you learning that you didn't know before? Fun facts. If a sea star's arm breaks off, it can grow another one. Hmm. Animals like seals, beluga whales, and walruses live in the cold waters near the North and South Poles. They all have a thick layer of fat called blubber to keep them warm. The whale shark is the world's largest shark. It gets about 45 feet or 14 meters long. Sea otters eat shellfish, such as clams. They smash the shells open by hitting them against a rock. To scare away predators, the porcupine fish sucks in water. Its body fills up to appear twice its normal size. Its spines pop out too. Hmm, lots of cool facts. So we heard this word in the last section, predator. And I think a lot of you know what that word is from science this year. So if you remember, predator is an animal that hunts other animals for food. This year we had also learned about the word prey, the ones that get eaten. So let's try predator and prey. Very good. Awesome. So this is our last page and I want us to stop and think what did you learn that was the most surprising or the most interesting thing from this book? Oh. Oh. So Mr. Sock Monkey said the most surprising thing that he learned was on this page how sea otters, they can actually break clams with rocks in order to eat them. He thought that that was pretty neat that they were able to figure out that tool. Thanks, Mr. Sock Monkey. Now, we have one more thing to think about for our KWL chart. We've talked a lot about what we learned, but we're done reading. And just like we talked about yesterday, I said we always have to make sure we ask questions or have wonderings before we read, which we did, while we were reading, which I hope we were doing, and after reading. So we're done reading the book, but do you have anything else you want to know about ocean animals that you didn't get an answer to in this text? Go ahead and tell your partner what you're thinking. What are you still wondering about ocean animals? Okay, so I have a wondering because when I saw this last page here with that really cool submarine looking thing in the unknown life section, it made me wonder. I wonder what kinds of tools scientists are using to explore the deep parts of the ocean. So I could tell they must be using the submarine, but what other tools? I'm really curious what else they're using. Now, I'm going to look back at what we wondered already throughout the book, and I want us to think, did we find answers to these questions as we were reading? And you can think about that too with your KWL chart. I wonder if animals in the ocean drink water. Do we find an answer to that in this book? No, we didn't. I wonder how many animals are in the ocean. We didn't get an answer to that question either. I wonder if there's questions on your KWL chart that you also didn't get an answer to. And then I wonder, what are we supposed to do? If we read the book and we still have questions, what would you do? I think I know what you're thinking. If you want to know answers to these tricky questions, you can always read another 
text. Now, it can be an online text or a book that you get from the library. We have Pebble Go. We have online library resources that we can use. And you could look up another book about ocean animals and maybe that will tell us some answers to these kinds of questions that we have or the kinds of questions you have in your own notebook. So remember, good readers, they don't just give up on their questions. They really try to find answers. And if it's really hard and they've read a bunch of books and they can't find an answer, then sometimes they might just make an inference or a smart guess. Now, I am done with my KWL chart, but I'm not done with this book. There's something else that I really want to show you. There's some super cool text features in the back of this book. And a lot of nonfiction books will have these text features. So I challenge you next time you read a nonfiction book, look and see if you find them. The first one I want to show you is a glossary. Check it out. A glossary will tell you the meaning of special words from the book. So if I was reading this book and I did not know what a sea anemone was, I could come back to the glossary, look for sea anemone. It's in ABC order, so I know it's towards the bottom. And then I find the answer. Oh, a sea anemone is a sea animal that has many tiny arms called tentacles. Ah, and now I know. The glossary tells me the meaning of key words. And the author puts that in there to really help me as a reader. So that's one of the text features. Now, the other text feature that I want to show you that's also at the end of the book is called an index. Ooh, I bet you've seen an index before. So an index is also in A, B, C order. That means it starts with A, then B, C, D, and in that order till Z and fills in whatever words it might have from that book that are important. So if I was going through this book and I didn't have a lot of time to read the whole thing, but I just wanted to look for certain parts, like maybe I really wanted to learn about the sunlight zone, well, I'd come back down here and I would find zones, sunlight, pages eight and 10. And I could flip to pages eight and 10. Hmm. <gasps> And look what I find there. On page eight, it's the sunlight zone. It tells me all about it. And then it continues on page 10. Page 10 talks again about the sunlight zone and how coral reefs grow there. So these two things, the glossary and the index, are some really cool text features along with the table of contents that really help readers understand the story and the words in the story even better. So really look out for those and let me know and let your teachers know if you find some this week, okay? Awesome. Well, we are at the end of our lesson, so it's time for us to review our objective. I would like us to think together about if we met this objective or not. I can hear and discuss part of a nonfiction text, including what I wonder and what I learn. Did you do that today? You read a nonfiction text. Did you discuss what you wondered? Did you discuss what you learned? Great, you met the objective today. And the last thing I want us to remember before I send you off is that when you're doing your independent reading today, Really notice, do you have a nonfiction book in your hands? If you do, you should stop right away and activate your schema before you open it up. Think, what do you already know? And you can fill out a KWL chart even for your independent reading book. Then set your purpose for reading. What do you want to know? What questions do you have about that topic? And as you're reading, notice, what are you learning? And then, Think, what new questions do you have while you're reading and when you're done reading? If it was great being able to read this book with you guys and finish it up today. I'm excited for our next lesson on this book where we learn how to retell a nonfiction text like this one, An Ocean of Animals. Great job today, readers, and I'll see you next time. Bye.